What's up YouTube? I'm back in the still standing garage and today I'm working on my 83 Regal again. I will be replacing the master cylinder and the booster here. Uh, it's been leaking for a while already and it's time to replace it. You can see it down there. It's been leaking. It gets on the frame and it just gets real nasty. It has been getting on my hydraulic cylinder hose here because it runs down there. And one thing that I noticed is that this nut right here is stripped but the one in the back it's not. Uh, so I think somebody has worked on this before I did buy this car 20 years ago and those 20 years that I've owned this car I've never worked on the, the um, Master cylinder and the booster here. So I never replaced it. I never worked on these lines before so What I'm thinking is when I got these hydraulics installed They most likely use some vice grips here to loosen it up. So that way they could make this uh, Brake line go back a little bit. So that way the cylinder doesn't get in the way I will be replacing these lines too. I have them brand new. Here are the parts out of the box. Got the master cylinder and the booster assembly from Rock Auto. I did post a video on Instagram about these and somebody suggested that I should get it chromed out, which would be nice, but I don't have the time to wait to get it chromed out. So I'm just gonna slap it on like this. I think the booster on my car right now, I think it's okay. It's only the master cylinder that's bad. But since this, this is a 40 year old car, why not replace both of them? at the same time. Here are the brake lines from the master cylinder to the proportioning valve. I got these from inlighttube.com. I will be using the proper tool so I don't strip the nuts on there. So let's get it going. Let's go. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to spray some PB blaster on the nuts for the brake lines here. So that way they're ready to go when I'm ready to loosen them up. So I'm just going to spray a little bit, put a towel underneath so I don't make a mess. Spray that make it easier on myself i'm gonna do the same thing under the car i'll show you that in later when i'm taking those off already and there it is let that sit so now i'm gonna use a turkey baser to remove all the brake fluid from here get all of it out get a towel here pour it in here Let's go get the rest. Try not to get anything out of 13s over here. So now with all the fluid out, time to start loosening up these brake lines here before I start unbolting the, the booster because it's gonna be a lot easier to remove these lines with the booster still attached to the firewall. So I'll be using a 916s line wrench. I'm going to try to see if I can get it on this one that's all busted already. So hopefully, oh, it went in there pretty good. But it wasn't going to be able to go in. So we'll see if we can get this one out. There, it actually went. Let me get a rag. Put this under here just in case. But I doubt anything's going to come out. It's actually coming out pretty good. So that penetrating oil worked really good. So it's a little bit coming out right there. Let's do the back side now. So we can pop this one off. And it broke loose. Penetrating oil for the wind. Alright, with those out now, I could go inside of the car under the, the dash and start unbolting the, the master or the booster. Alright, so now going under the dash, let me show you what else needs to be removed so we can let that booster free. So there's a, a clip up there that holds the booster shaft onto the pedal here. Let me see if I can point it out. So this right here where my screwdriver is pointing, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a clip here that holds the shaft or this is the shaft right here of the booster so i need to remove that to release the shaft and then i have to loosen or remove these nuts that are up here this one here that one there and then there's two more on the other side so there's a total of four and i'll be using a deep socket uh five eight for the top ones i will be using a swivel try to get up there because i do have a lot of wiring down here kind of gets in the way for me i'm gonna see if i could be able to record for you guys all right you two so i ended up removing that cotter pin, it's called an R-clip. 
So I removed this from the shaft and the washer. So the washer goes on there first and then the, the cotter pin here goes on there. I did, did end up removing the nuts as well. I used a 5.8 socket, deep socket, because that's all I had, but I'm pretty sure this is a 15 millimeter. But uh, I was able to remove them with no problems. They weren't on there real tight. They're just on there pretty snug, so that was pretty easy. I didn't strip any of them, which is good. Uh, let me see if I could show you under there, give you guys a better view here. You see that in the middle of the screen? You can see the shaft from the booster coming through the firewall. And then I'll try to add arrows here on the screen. You can see the shaft from the pedal. That's what goes through the, the booster shaft. And then the washer goes on and then that cotter pin goes through it. So it's time to remove it, take it out from the engine bay. Let's go. All right, so this should just come out with no problems. Should be able to just pull it out. Let's see how that works out for us. Oh, we gotta disconnect the, the hose from the carburetor that goes to the carburetor. came out one piece let's see what it looks like on the back so here's the booster shaft that goes through the pedal shaft all right and this is what it looks like with it removed you could tell it was leaking for a while I'll try to clean this up as much as i can before i put the new one back on all right, let's put the new one in. Try to align everything. Hopefully that that shaft, that booster shaft doesn't start hitting the pedal because I don't have anybody inside to help me. And it seems like it might be hitting. No, it's pretty good. So there it is, it's, it's on there. Just gotta put everything on on the inside. All right, YouTube, everything down there is put back together. It's ready to go. One issue that I did have and was very time consuming that I do want to mention in this video was that this plunger, I kept calling it a shaft, but it's actually called a plunger. I'll keep calling it a shaft anyways. <laughs> so the shaft here on the new one, I was able to get it started on the, on the shaft on the pedal, the brake pedal in the car, but it wouldn't go in all the way. As you could tell, this is very flexible. You can move it around. But even with that, I wasn't able to pop it in. It wouldn't pop in. I, I didn't have enough space in there to, to massage it in with the hammer. Because like I, I said, it's very cluttered down there with the wiring and everything. So I wasn't able to hit it in. So after messing with it inside of there, trying to get the, the shaft of the booster on the shaft of the pedal, uh, I wasted probably like 45 minutes. And then I decided to loosen up the nuts on the booster here. Left the nuts all the way to the tip. I didn't take them completely off. I ended up leaving the shaft, started already on the pedal, came out here with this loose, I was able to move it around a bit, go up and down, wiggle it um, back and forward, and then I was able to hear a click, a little popping sound, a clack, and then I went inside and I checked it out and sure enough, the shaft went in all the way, I was able to put the washer on and the clip back in and it was ready to go. I wanted to mention that because um, just in case one of you guys is trying to do this, to, trying to do the same thing you can't get that shaft in there that's what worked for me it might work for you maybe you have more room under that dash than i do but that's what worked they're tight or this is tight now everything's ready to go inside of there and uh the torque spec i didn't bother to look it up because when i took off those nuts they weren't tight they weren't super tight i just popped them off and they, they came off so that's i did the same thing so next thing is removing these old brake lines that i want to replace i got to remove them from down there uh, from the proportioning valve now these jeep bodies or at least this one has the proportioning valve on this side on the driver's side inside the frame rail so i'll show you that in a bit let's go take those off let's go all right youtube so here i am and under the car driver's side wanted to show you that's the front over there where the camera's facing and then right here middle of the screen is a proportioning valve now it has this bracket here that holds on the the lever for the transmission Right here might get in the way, but I'm gonna have to work around it. I'm not removing the proportioning valve. So let me show you where those lines are that I need to take off. You see that in the center there? That's gonna be the sensor that I need to remove the plug from. So that way it'll make it easier for me to be able to remove those lines, the brake lines. And also I am gonna use a tool 
after I remove that sensor from in there. So right now I'm just removing the plug. Later on I am gonna remove the sensor so I can put in this tool, which I'll show you. But uh, let's remove these right here and see how uh, difficult it is. I did apply some, some lubricant in there, some penetrating oil, so hopefully I'm able to remove them. Let's try that. I have my catch can right here on my catch bucket for when I remove those lines. They should have a little bit of brake fluid in them, so let's take them off. See what happens. So first things first, I am gonna try to remove that plug. Like I said, uh, it's supposed to be one of those push style. So I'm gonna try to use these pliers and hopefully I'm able to remove it and pop it out of there without breaking anything. Well, that was pretty easy. So that came off. Now let's set it off to the side over there. And then this is my hydraulic line right here. The one I'm putting at right here. So hopefully that doesn't get in the way when I'm trying to put in the new ones. But we're going to find out. We have to work around that too. Uh, let's remove the furthest one away from me first, which is this one right here. Because I don't want any of that brake fluid running down if I do remove this one first. So let's remove this one first. This is going to be a 916 line wrench. And let's see if we have enough room here to take it off. It's on there. Let's see if I can pop it off. My exhaust is in the way. Watch them knuckles. Feels like it loosened up, so we should be able to take it off now. So it is coming off. I didn't have a hard time um, loosening it up. So let me take this off and move on to the other one in a bit. All right, that line is already off. Let's try to take off the one in the back over here. That's the last one. Let me see. I can't even see where the, the nut is at. Let me see. All right, now that it's in, let's try to see if we could pop it off without busting any knuckles or breaking anything. Okay, watch them knuckles. Oh, well, that was good. Nothing happened. It was pretty easy. It wasn't that bad. So let me loosen this one up too. It's gonna take a while because I don't have that much room, but it is what it is, patience. All right, YouTube, so this one's already off. I could actually move the the nut up so it's ready to go now let's go back up top and remove a clamp that's holding both of them together up there i'm going to try to see if i can move my hydraulic line out of the way because i feel like it's going to be uh, a problem trying to get the new ones back in because you want to make sure that you get those uh nice and straight i don't want them to bind up in there okay so now that everything's loose down there all i have to do now is remove that bolt that's right there in the center of the screen i'll try to put an arrow there it's kind of hard to get the camera back there but that bracket right there is what's holding the two lines together onto the frame so now all i gotta do is take that off it's a 13 millimeter socket i'm gonna use a swivel to remove it so let's do that and then i can start pulling off the lines from there loosened up and the bolt fell so let's see if we can pull these out all right you can feel that they popped out already from down there just gotta maneuver them out and there they are they're off. So this is the bracket that was holding it on, or holding both of them onto the frame there. I'm gonna clean this up, put it on the other ones. Do wanna see how these are going, so that way they, they go in the same way. Hopefully I don't have trouble putting these back in on the new ones, putting this on. Let me see, right there. So we'll find out. Let's try to feed those other ones in after I clean this bracket, let's go. All right, so what I decided to do is to put one line in at a time. So I don't wanna put both of them together with the bracket and bolt it onto the frame just yet because I did notice that these are slightly off compared to the old ones. So I'm gonna put the one that goes to the back of the proportioning valve, I'm gonna put this one on first, uh, tighten it down down there, and then I'll come back and do the second one. And then what I wanna do is, um, if I have to maneuver this to fit onto the master cylinder here, then I wanna do it up here, not down there, because it's really hard to get down there. So let me, Feed this through here, 
And then another thing that I did was that I I moved the sensor, the one that I unplugged from from the proportioning valve. I moved it out of the way because uh, I don't want it to bind up with the lines as I'm trying to put them on and then later on find out that I have to remove some things to feed it through again. So let me see. I'm going to leave it there and hopefully I have enough room to maneuver it down there. So I'm going to go down there, tighten it up from down there. Let's go. All right, YouTube, real quick. I was able to start the thread down there, but I decided to come up here and put it on the master cylinder, even though I still need to bleed the master cylinder. I wanted to snug it up up here just so that way the, the line doesn't move on me because I want to make sure that I'm centered down there. Let me go down there and show you what I did to get that on. So here's what I did down here. I removed the bracket that held the proportioning valve onto the frame. I have it right here. It was two bolts, 13 millimeter heads. I uh, was able to remove that pretty easy. It wasn't on there too hard. Now the proportioning valve right now, it's loose. The only thing holding it up is the lines that are hooked up to it. The linkage here to the transmission, it's a lot more uh, flexible. I was able to move it around so that I could get my hand in there and tighten up that, that line. I was able to get in there. That line to the left there is the line that I'm working on right now. I was able to get in there with my hand get the thread started with my hand i didn't want to start it with the wrench because i didn't want to cross thread anything and especially in this area it sucks to get up here so that's ready to go that's why i wanted to snug up the the line up there with the master cylinder even though i'm going to remove it later on all i got to do is do the other one tighten that up and then we can start working up there let's go all right youtube so both lines are now on on the proportioning valve i haven't put them on up here because I am planning on bleeding the master cylinder right here. So let me show you this line here. So you can see this is the line that goes to the master cylinder for the front of the brakes. And look how far off the angle is here. I mean, I have to massage it in to get it in there. I am gonna do that, but I just wanted to show you how off these are. It's not bad, I mean, they're manageable, you know? I don't wanna kink them or anything like that. I gotta be real careful when I'm doing that. So let's keep it moving. So before lowering the car, to bleed the master cylinder, I am gonna go down there and install this proportioning valve bleed tool. This is gonna help the proportioning valve from locking up when bleeding the brakes. I'll try to put a, a diagram up here so you guys can check that out. So let's go down there and put this on. So I ended up putting the bracket back on for the transmission linkage here. I put the two bolts back on to uh, snug it up against the frame here so that way the proportioning valve doesn't start moving on me when I start cranking on that sensor there in the middle because that's where the proportioning tool or the bleeder tool goes into. So I need to take that off. That's gonna be a 5 8 uh, wrench that I'm gonna be using to take off. Let's do it. All right, let's put in this 5 8 wrench here. Crank it without busting any knuckles. And it's coming off pretty good. Gonna keep removing it. Putting the bracket back on does help because it does feel like, it, since it's plastic, it feels like it's tight in there for each turn that I take. So, let me take that off. I just remember that I had this ratchet set that I bought a long time ago. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Look at that, I don't have to take out the damn wrench. It happens, I buy tools or parts and I forget that I have them and then somehow I remember when, or when I'm looking for other stuff I find it. So let me take this off. It's coming off pretty easy. Now it's coming off pretty fast. So let me take it off. A lot of banging going on right here. Wiggle, wiggle. All right, YouTube, and there it is. It came off. It's pretty good. It looks like exactly like the tool that we're gonna put in. So let me put it in. Let me grab it real quick. So this is gonna go in the same location where I took that part out, obviously. Let's see if I can find the hole up here. So let me put this in there. I need to get really deep in there. Me holding the camera doesn't help. So let me put it in there. Time to bleed the master cylinder here. I have removed the hose that I had put on here or the line that I had put on here. Let me put on the, the vacuum line for the, the booster here. The check valve, pop that in there all the way. Now the booster has this uh, warning tag here. It says warranty void if check valve is removed. So I'm not gonna remove this tag until I actually test the car and make sure that the booster is working properly. So now what I'm gonna use to bleed the master cylinder is gonna be this kit right here. 
from Dorman. It's a master cylinder uh, bleeder kit. Comes with a whole bunch of fittings and the hose here. I'll put it on here and then I'll show you how I installed it and uh, we'll keep it moving from there. All right, so I already installed the fittings here. Obviously the clear hose. It, everything that's on here comes in the kit, the clips here to hold the hoses in. So the hoses are all the way as far as, as I could put them in. Let me show you. This thing is stuck. See the hoses are all the way in there, both sides. Going to add some fresh DOT3 brake fluid on here. I'm trying to do this by myself, so hopefully it works out. I am going to use a camera to see if air bubbles are coming through. So let me fill this up. That's good right there. Pour some more in this one. So the idea here is I'm going to be pumping the brake pedal inside of the car and the fluid is supposed to come back into the reservoir and then it's supposed to clear all the bubbles. All the bubbles should be coming off the top. So I am going to use the recording here that I'm doing for you guys. I am going to use it for myself too because I am doing this by myself. So let's get that going. One. I'm supposed to let off of it real slow as well. I'm not supposed to do it really fast. You can see the air bubbles coming out of there. You see that? It's exactly what we want. Nice and slow until there's no more air bubbles. Keep pumping. Nice and slow. Release. Now it's time to take all this off and then put the brake lines in there. This one's not going to be a problem because I already test fit this one. Now one thing I should have done before putting the, the brake fluid in here and bleeding it was I should have test fit this one. Because like I said, this one's off to the side. The angle's not right. So I got to form it. And the problem's going to be that once I take this off and try to, you know, fit it in there back and forth, back and forth. All that fluid is going to be coming out. So I got to get some rags, put them down there. So now with everything installed in here. Now all I got to do is bleed the brakes with the proportioning valve bleed tool that I left in the proportioning valve. So what I am going to do is I'm going to bleed the brakes starting from the passenger rear, then moving on to the driver rear, then passenger uh, front, and then driver front. So let me do that real quick. And just like that, I bled all the brakes. I didn't have any issues at all. Everything went real smooth. I already went ahead and removed my, my tool here. I already went ahead and removed the proportioning valve bleed tool here and put the sensor back in. I also plugged it back in. One thing that I didn't do is put the clamp back on the lines down there to hold both of them on the frame there because they are about a half inch away from the frame and I don't want to create any stress on the lines here. So I just left it like that. I don't think it should be a, a problem at all. And then another thing that I need to figure out later on is going to be the, the cylinder here. I need to make sure it doesn't hit the line here and then start losing brakes here. I do have to remove my cylinder, change the seals. As you can see the, the oil down there that's coming from the cylinder. And that's on both sides. These are really old cylinders, but that's, a, that's another video for another day. Everything's working out really good. It's raining really hard outside, so I'm not going to be able to test drive it. But the pedal on the brake feels really, really good. I don't have a windshield wiper motor here because I am working on that. I still have to figure out some other things. But that's pretty much it for the video. Thank you for watching. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh.